nothing interests me better than projects for African, of Africa and by Africans. And of course, I give it up to CEOs who keep building to get Africa better. Talking about tokens, projects that improve the fintech space and the agrotech space in Africa, the business leader of the week does not just stop at bringing you the best of the CEOs, but also touching the world and the market here in Africa. My name is Emeka Eze, and this is Daba TV. You are watching the business leader of the week. I am not alone in the studio as usual. I've got a guest with me in the studio who I will call a Syria entrepreneur, the current, currently the CEO of Farm Chain Finance. He also co-founded and is the CEO of Giz Digital Assets. He's a business professional and a coach, someone who we can refer to as a blockchain expert. I'm talking of none other than Golomo Stanley. I'm going to bring him to your screens after we come back from this short break, but do not go anywhere. I will be right back. Welcome back from that short break. This is still Daba TV and my name is Emeka Eze. Before we went on that short break, I talked about bringing you a guest in the studio who is a blockchain expert and building proje projects that has been aiding Africans to solve fintech and agrotech problems around the continent of Africa. Well, before we go straight into today's program, I'd like to remind you to subscribe, click the like button, subscribe to this channel, share, comment, and tell us exactly what you feel about the good works here happening in Daba Studios. And of course, I made mention of Golomo Stanley, the CEO at FarmChain Finance and the co-founder at CEO at um, Giz Digital Assets. Welcome to the program, Mr. Thank, Stanley. Thank you very much. It's Mr. really Mr. nice to have you around. Thank you, you very know, much. This is the business pleasure. leader of the week, and we carefully select our guest here in the studio to tell us their stories, inspire our audience, and share us their experience. So you're very, very much welcome. We're really glad to have you. Thank you so much, Emeka. Yeah, and so before we go really deep into discussion and talking about your projects and everything you are doing handy for Nigeria and Africa, tell us exactly who Golomo Stanley is. Well, um, just like you've um, already told the audience, my name is Golomo Stanley. Um, I'm a blockchain expert. I'm an engineer from my background and um, presently into blockchain uh, for since 2016. I've been in the blockchain space, um, and um, w since I came into the blockchain space, uh, because of my old goal as an entrepreneur, I've been working around the scene to see how to build products around blockchain. I didn't just come into the blockchain space just to be a, a backbencher. Right. Uh, I've seen the need to build products. So since 2016, I've been working on a series of products down to today that we have function finance. So I'm the co-founder. And CEO of Function Finance, like you mentioned, and also the co-founder and CEO of Giz Digital Assets Asset. Limited. Great, that's nice. It's it's a good way. It's a good way to start off this conversation. Now you mentioned that you've been trying to build product, and that's obvious in some of the projects you're currently running. And I discovered when I was researching farm farm chain finance, I discovered that this is just more than an agrotech. There is the part of farm chain finance, or farm chain finance is hugely attached to the blockchain technology. Please, can you give us the whole idea around farm chain finance? Well, um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Um, in the course of my entrepreneurship, um, I came into the agri space. Okay. That was um, around 2017, late 2017. I came into the agri space in the course of um, finding different solutions as an entrepreneur. Um, I've been um, working with um, um, some cooperatives. Um, I've worked with a series of agri, agri cooperatives, okay. that is farmers cooperatives. Um, I've been, been with them for a while. We've been working together to see how to get access to funding for farmers because uh, my, my grandmom is a farmer. She's a farmer, although she's late now. And um, I know when I was young, I used to, when I, whenever I would go to the village, yeah. I joined her in farming. And um, alongside with these village farmers, mm -hmm. there was something I learned from my, my grandmom then. She doesn't like farming alone. In her farm, I, w I would see some other women who are farming with her. I would ask her, I thought this farm is your farm. Mm -hmm. She said, say, no, it's not just my farm. It's a farm that belongs to some group of women. I said, how come? So how are you managing? How are you sharing 
the farm, I pulled, proceeds, getting the profits profit and all that. She told me about it. And I was like, wow, this is very fantastic. Imagine you alone farming. Sometimes you might not have the strength to be able to carry out um, a large farm like mm -hmm. this. So she told me that they, have, they are coming in like cooperative women and they farm big, big area of farm. And they come up with good product from the farm, large product, they sell it and they make a lot of money. So around that 2017, when I started working with these cooperative farmers, I saw that same model in what they are trying to do. Okay. But they are trying to get funding through the central bank, as in through the traditional financing. It has been a very big challenge for them. Although I was one of their coordinators when it comes to gaining access to funding from the, right. from the traditional financing system. So I helped them to prepare their documentations, all the necessary documents they need, the, 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 the collaterals for their loans and all of those stuff intercede with um, the, the, um, the Bank of Agriculture okay. and the CBN to make sure that this will get funding. It's not a very, it's not a very easy, easy, process. easy process, very tedious process. And you know the funny part? By the time we go through all of this process, these farmers come up with all the necessary things that the, the, uh, the traditional financing uh, system wants. Requires. Go through all the requirements. At the end of the day, these farmers will not be able to get the money. You hear one story, ah, the president has, re has released 300 million naira <laughs> for these farmers. And the, the, the next thing, the farmer, the money is with CBN. CBN will say the money has gone to a Bank of Agriculture. Okay, we'll go to Bank of Agriculture. They'll ask us to open an account. The farmers will open all the account, the necessary things. The next thing you hear that um, the money is coming this week, it's coming next yes, week. They will just start giving you all sorts of so stories. So one way or the other, the funds that the is supposed to get to those to farmers, these farmers don't get is there. diverted somewhere else. In fact, the one that that hurt me so bad, that was around 2017, late 2017. The fund was already with the Bank of Agriculture. And they're supposed to release this money to these farmers the following week. But this money didn't come. So when we started making investigations, we discovered that this Bank of Agriculture, instead of them giving this money to the farmers, they now deposited this money in the bank, in the commercial bank. Probably because the commercial bank are giving them it higher returns sorry, for their well, investment than the farmers. It was so sad. By the time we had to go through the process to the CBN and the rest, they had to sack that particular director from that office okay. because of that step it took. But the money, at the end of the day, the money didn't come. So it has not been an easy challenge. So these are some of the challenges that I encountered with these cooperative farmers that led to my idea of coming up with a solution to these uh, farmers' problems. How can these farmers get access to funding without going through this rigorous process? Now, as I've been in the blockchain space, I've seen how blockchain works, especially decentralized financing, how it works. I look at it and wow, this is, this is something that I think I can apply in this aspect of um, agro, uh, agro the agri-tech yeah. uh, space. So 2019, precisely, I came up with um, Farm Chain, Farm Chain Limited, which is, is a, regist it's a registered, registered business. agri -tech business in Nigeria. Came up with Farm Chain Limited. That is how it was registered. So we came up with a platform then called My Farm Chain. So we tried to see how, how can these farmers, since they don't understand blockchain, how can we help them so that they'll be able to get access to funding? So we came up with a normal traditional financing system where okay. people generally can just raise funds and um, we use this fund to give to these farmers. Normal traditional, that is fiat currency. So we've now built our platform, farm chain, my farm chain then. So people can now contribute to a particular farm, particular farmers, contribute money there, and we use this money to empower these farmers. And these investors, they get returns from their farming okay. uh, every six months. And one so it's, it's more like the first idea around farm chain finance is to look for a private way yes. or a personalized way to generate funds, funds. to help so these farmers these achieve these their farmers. goals. Yes. So, okay. so over time, we, it, it, it has been a successful process. We've been able to help over um, 400 farmers wow. back then. We train these farmers. What we do, we don't just give the give money to the farmers. We train these farmers. We give them certificates. Okay. Uh, then we partner with CBN then to train these farmers. We train these farmers, we give them a certificate backed by CBN and Farm Chain Limited. Yeah. And then before these farmers, when we give them this training, we now fund these farmers. So they get the necessary funding and they bring returns from their Was CBN supportive with the funding in any way? Or mm, just not the at partnership? All. Not at all. It was just more like a partnership. You know, CBN, that is one of the challenges we have with the traditional financing system. Oh, we'll get there. They, they, we'll, get, uh, we'll get to uh, talk about uh, the, the, the So the we, uh, they, they didn't really give us any financial support. We, we, we funded the whole process ourselves. We trained these farmers and we equipped them. There are, there are farmers who are in, in a cooperative settings. 
So we train them on cluster farming. We train them on, on moving their, their farming business from just agriculture to agribusiness. Okay. So we taught them the economics of agriculture. Of agriculture. Of agribusiness. Like more like the business side yes, the of business the, aspect. Of the, of the, of the, so the in each of their farming activity, we teach them what we call the economics of production. Okay. So they, they, they know what it will take for them to carry out their farming activities, the cost implication and all of those stuff. What, it, what would it cost them to sell off their products? So we now arrange um, buyers of their for products them. Oh, from the onset. More like they do the dirty job in the farm. Yes. You train them on the business aspect, aspect. and still provide them with a market. With, yes, with the market. Oh, okay. So they can sell these products and get returns. So from the beginning of their farming process, the farmers already know what they are going to earn at the end of the day. That makes a lot of sense. So it makes it easy for them. So they'll be able to plan themselves towards when they will be getting their returns from their farming activities. So once they get the returns, they continue the farming process again, they continue the cycle again. Okay, so at this point, where the farmers are aware or uh, in the know that this is more like a system tied towards blockchain, or no. they, have not, they are not exposed to it at that point? The truth of the matter is that uh, farmers, these farmers are local people. Most of them don't even have a smartphone. Phone. Okay. Uh, most of them just use normal... Uh, so uh, I'm, going to uh, even, I'm, going to, I'm going to even get to that. I'm yes. going to really get to that because there's, there's a lot more. I was really concerned when I was reading about farm chain finance and the services you provide. And we know farmers in this part of the world, in this part of the country, the farmers are mostly people who may not even know how to read and write. These are the people that put their hands in the mud and do stuff. You know, and I'm like, how do you want to bring them into this? I mean, we're going to really talk about that. But let me ask this first. Um, you, you are currently the CEO at Farm Chain Finance. You are also the co-founder and CEO at um, Giz Digital Assets. Mm -hmm. But you prefer to be recognized more with farm chain. And then when you were talking, you, you mentioned about when you talk about yourself, you are an engineer, a blockchain expert. I didn't hear you are a farmer. So why are you identifying more with farm chain finance at this point? Yeah, okay, that's good. Um, you know, I have other businesses that I do. Okay. Like you made mention of Giz Digital Asset Limited. Um, is actually that's actually uh, a digital asset management firm okay. that I own. And we are actually managing digital assets for over over 50 persons, 50 individuals, presently, currently, on our portfolio. So hold on, no. digital asset you're talking about, do I have to in invest funds or I have digital assets and I can, let me understand what you mean by uh, what, managing what, digital what we do. What we do, basically, we manage this asset for people, we also do investment. But this is more on, uh, would I say more on a low-key arrangement. We, people can, can bank their digital assets with us. Okay. We bank it for them. Then we also add banking for us. You know, the, the normal banking system, you, you pay, you pay the, the, the you have to um, pay some commission More like by the time you want to collect yeah. your, 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 your assets yeah. from these holders of your assets. Right. What we do, instead of you paying us to hold your asset for us, we pay you. We give you some little interest okay. for banking your asset with us. That's what we do in GIS Digital Asset Limited. Okay, does that, that sounds to me like staking. Uh, is, is, staking. We can say it in the decentralized finance yes. ecosystem, we call it staking. staking. Okay. Yeah, so people can stake their asset with us and then um, they can get um, a little returns from their staking with, with right, Jesus. I think that, that, that's, that's, uh, that, that's, uh, that's more on the low key. People don't know me much um, in that aspect of my business because we, we, we have to do it. We call it more like a family funding system. So it's more like family and friends. Just a small um, circle of small circle yeah. of people who actually do this with uh, GIS Digital Asset. But Farm Chain Finance, which is where uh, is my core uh, focus yeah. in my business, um, because um, like you said, I didn't mention myself as a farmer. I'm actually a farmer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually a farmer. I own some farms. Uh, so it's, it's something that I have great passion for like for i told you i've been farming with my grandma your grandma for years so that passion has been there for farming although i don't do the dirty work of course um, of but course. Um, i enjoy going to the farm and just seeing what's really happening in the farm and then um, the process of farming i understand very very well and then um, as a businessman i try to look at the business aspect more of, yeah. in the agri sector so that's why we focus that's why we are focusing more on um, the business aspects. Great. I have a lot to talk to you about um, farm chain. Now, this one is my concern. You know, when I logged onto the website, I discovered that farm chain finance capitalizes on DeFi to empower cooperative farmers. How did you come up with a solution like that for the Nigerian market? Good, good. 
you know um, when when you when you when you pass through uh, a pain process i'm sorry to cut you okay. um for those who don't don't really get it when i say farm chain finance capitalizes on DeFi to empower cooperative farmers it's simply DeFi there means decentralized finance right just for those of us who are not really into the crypto and blockchain niche this is more like your time in that space so yes. decentralized finance that's correct very very correct right so please so how did you come up with a solution like that for the nigerian market okay so like i said earlier we've been using the traditional financing model uh, in farm chain limited um but when we saw some of the bottlenecks that were attached to it we had to look at what are the easier way for these farmers to gain access to financing for their agri businesses okay. that is when we 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 after doing deep research on decentralized finance we saw it as the best solution for us to gain access to funding. So we, 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 we now introduce that model into our business. Okay. That is where the idea of the, 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 the bet for farm chain finance came in. This uh, idea of farm chain finance, it came in late 2020. Okay. Yes, late 2020. We've not been answering farm chain finance. People know us as farm chain limited. But when we came up with um, the decentralized finance model, we had to tweak our project to farm chain finance. Okay. So this time around, we are using decentralized financing to empower farmers. So what we do is just um, um, we, we, we have to build a community around our decentralized finance ecosystem, build a community of blockchain enthusiasts, investors, and all of that, who are familiar with decentralized financing, staking, and all of those stuff. So what we do is we, we build our platform we build a platform, a decentralized application platform. Yeah. Yes, on the Binance Smart Chain. Yeah. Where people can, that is blockchain and crypto enthusiasts, can actually stake funds in a pool. Okay. And these funds become a liquid fund where these farmers can assess, assess these funds easily. It's just a simple process. We call it, you st we, we, you, we vote, mm -hmm. stake, and earn. That is the way we, we say Just three votes, steps. Vote, vote stake, stake end. and end. Okay. So that's for the community. Yes. That's for our community. But for the farmers, theirs is you propose, you propose, you propose, and if your proposal is approved, you gain you access, access to, to funding. Funds. So you propose, like gain access to funding. It's just as easy as that. So, as so you don't need so to go through series of protocol and all of those stuff. You don't need to go through that. that but there are sense. some there are some security measures that we we are carrying out behind the scene. Okay. Uh, that might not be too known to the public. Yeah. Uh, because you know that is, that is that is our source. Yeah. That's our source. That's our secret sauce. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. like the Coca Cola brand, they have yeah, their secret, secret sauce, sauce. <laughs> that they don't tell to the public. True. Uh, so we have a secret sauce behind the scene because so many persons might wonder how how. How do you secure this funding from the investors? Won't this summer just take the money and disappear and mm -hmm. all of those stuff? So we have some kind of security measures behind the scene that um, we ensure that this, this fund goes through the right process okay. and returns back into the pool. Because this fund, at the end of the day, these farmers kind out to carry out their farming activity. The fund returns back to the pool yeah. and the smart contract distributes this okay, I get your point now. So I am a guys. farmer. I dropped a proposal, maybe needing like, let's say, um, 1.5 million naira to run a project. Yeah. I have to carefully deliver that project yes. and make sure that the funds that have been allocated to me yes. is returned back into, back the, into pool the pool and the circle continues. Yeah. So apparently, farm chain finance is leveraging on the strength of her community to finance the farmers, the farmers who are now delivering the project comfortably Beautiful. without waiting for a central bank Beautiful. or a bank of a Greek to no, they don't need a, they don't need to go through all of those stuff anymore <laughs> that makes that makes that makes all the sense now now i was also looking at um a publication by farm chain finance on 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 twitter and i re realized that you just announced the launch of the first part of the farm joint finance divide protocol good is that what we just talked about good, good. now that that's launching um, has to do with, um, you know, we, we have um, a protocol in our system. We have what we call the local nodes. Yeah. You know, you talked about the farmers. You say these farmers, they don't understand technology. Yes, that's so really, that's really my concern. How do we bridge Bring them, yeah. this whole process that these local farmers can uh, assess funding on our pool and all of those stuff and also return back this fund mm -hmm. to the pool? So we now, we now have a model. We, we have what we call our local nodes. Okay. These local nodes are more like extension workers in the traditional agri space. So these local okay. nodes are the ones who actually interface 
with the farmers and farm chain finance. The okay. local nodes can be any part of Kabin, any part of the world. Okay. We are starting from Africa, from Nigeria, but our goal is to build this ecosystem to different parts of the world. So local nodes can be spawned, local nodes from different parts of the world can be verified, vetted and verified on our platform. And they so, can spawn. So let me get it. Are you trying to say local nodes are playing the role of gatekeepers to the farmers? Beautiful. Something like that. Yes. Okay, that makes sense now. So they are like the gatekeepers to these farmers. Okay, so what does that, that protocol now that just launched, what does it mean to farmers? And what does it mean to farm chain finance? Uh, it means a lot for us because that um, protocol is, is more, is, in fact, that is the brain box okay. behind the entire process. Okay. Uh, we have um, um, the local node dashboards. We have the cooperative dashboard on this protocol. If, if you go to our website, you see the dashboard section where the local nodes, they are actually verified. They go through a rigorous KYC process with farm chain finance. Yeah. Very rigorous KYC process. And then um, the cooperative farmers, we don't really need to know them, but they also go through a process of verification. That is the cooperative farmers. Oh. So they, they, the nodes are the ones who actually interact. They are just like in the blockchain space, we have what we call the nodes. These nodes are the ones who confirm transactions. Mm -hmm. these, these are supercomputers that validate transactions on the blockchain. So we try to tweak this whole process to our local nodes. So these local nodes are more like, they, they operate more like the nodes in the blockchain. So they validate these uh, 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 cooperatives and they validate the entire process on our protocol. That, that's, that's, that's really great, you know. I mean, I've been, I've been seeing a lot of agrotech startups solve similar problems. But farm chain finance is solving this problem in a very unique way that I am personally impressed about. I'm impressed about it because, you know, the average farmer does not feel limited to tech anymore. They know that I can assess funds and they know exactly how the funds are being provided, right? I'm really, really impressed. So I'm going to ask, aside this, is there something else that sets farm chain apart from every other existing agrotech startups in Nigeria? Let's start with that's a very fine question. You know, the, um, there's something unique that we are doing right now with our farmers. You know, we've been training our farmers in the normal agribusiness, in the normal farming process. But this time around, we are now pushing our farmers into a unique kind of farming. Today, because of insecurity and, and this herdsman attack on farms, yeah. It has been a very big challenge for farmers. True, Even true. most of our farmers are actually affected as a result of that. So we started looking at what solutions could we provide for these farmers. We come up with the idea of, we, we now have to partner with one of our technical partners, the Soilless Farm Labs, where we help our farmers. We train them on soilless farming, mm -hmm. where they can farm in a small area of farmland, mm -hmm. very small area. What you can plant on uh, maybe um, one hectare of land, you can plant it on a plot of land. Oh, wow. So we now come up with that idea. Look, instead of you people going to um, farm on a very large scale of farmland, there is no security and all of those challenges. Why can't you come, to, come together, few of you as a cooperative, come together, maybe you have one or two plots of land. Mm -hmm. We can help you to set up that, that plot of land. That takes us to what grandma was doing. Yes. At the start, Good. that's grandma's so idea. We can now help you to maybe f put the land, fence up, fence up the land, put gate there, then we build you a, a greenhouse farm, the soilless greenhouse farm. Mm -hmm. Build it for you, and you put manage this, this, this farm. That will take us to the next point of what we are launching, which okay. is the, 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 the functionalized NFT for our farms. Oh, okay. So well, we're going to get there. Yeah. Now, this is conversation is getting really, really, really interesting. You want to know why you should listen to someone like Golomo Stanley? He's one who's gone, he's professionally certified to be an entrepreneur. He's a Y Combinator startup school student or graduate, should I call yes, it that? Yes, yes. So this man knows how to run startups. I mean, you want to trust him with that. And think about someone who has experience in, in, in agri, naturally growing up. Yeah. And of course, have put your hands in the game. This is what we call skin in the game in the startup business. So you should definitely listen to him. We're going to be right back after this short break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking more about what is new on farm chain finance, what they're running with the NFTs, what they're doing, what projects is coming up, and a few more things, including the challenges that they must be going through running a startup like this. My name is Emeka is a Steel, and this is Steel Daba TV. We will be right back.
welcome back from that short break. This is still Daba TV and you are watching the business leader of the week and that is none other than Golomo Stanley, the CEO of Farm Chain Finance and he's here with me in the studio today. We've been talking a lot about what Farm Chain has been doing for Nigerian farmers, how it has been solving the problem of fundraising for farmers and how it is making it easy for them to, to get funds for their project. I mean, and even bring it back to the pool where these funds are being generated. And Golomo Stanley has been providing us with quality information about DeFi tech, blockchain, and of course, agrotech here in the space of Nigeria and Africa. So we're on up on the conversation until you mentioned um, the next project for farm chain finance. That sounded to me like some interesting thing I want to hear. So tell us, what is it? What is it that we're looking up to? for farm chain finance? Yeah, uh, you, we, we're actually coming up with some fantastic products. Okay. Which is um, the, the fractionalized NFT. We call it fractionalized NFT because when, person, when people hear the word NFT, NFT. they see it like um, it's just a, it's, it's a unique asset that, is, that has its own unique feature. It cannot be fungible, that is, it cannot be splitted into yeah. smaller units. But um, the, the truth of the matter is that uh, NFT has gone beyond just NFT. Okay. We now have what we call the fractionalized NFT, whereby a um, group of persons can co-own an NFT. All right. And this particular NFT could be fractionalized so that um, maybe a group of maybe 50 persons can own that NFT. And they have the unique features that, that uh, um, correlates with that particular uh, um, NFT product. So that is exactly the idea we are bringing into Farm Chain Finance. So what we do is, like I talked about the, the, the soilless farms. Okay. Once we set up the soilless, soilless farms for these cooperative farmers, mm -hmm. we set it up, we, we put everything in place. Then we now, we now NFT these particular farms. farms. Okay. We NFT these farms and we now, we now meet the NFTs, the fractionalized NFT, and people can now own these NFTs. People can purchase these NFTs from the NFT marketplace. Yeah then they can now co-own these farms. Okay. What do I mean by co-owning these farms? Then I have profit sharing rights for these farms. Okay. So in as much as these cooperative farmers are the ones managing the farms, making sure the, the, the farm grows well, they water the farms and all, do all the necessary things, they have their earnings. We have uh, a profit sharing model whereby the, the cooperative farmers, the local nodes, farm chain finance as a, comp as, as a, a, yes. a startup, then the, the investors, that is the community, will have a profit sharing model for all of them. So you owning that NFT gives you profit sharing right for those farms. So it's like you are a co-owner of, of that farm. particular farm. But of course, the farmers still get enough from yes, their, the farmers, from their labor, Yes, the farmers from their still get work. enough for, for their hard work. Definitely, they still have that. It's just like uh, traditionally, if you own a farm, you are the owner of the farm. Yeah, but you have labor, you, 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 you have people who work for you and you pay them you and pay all of those stuff. So what we do with farm chain finance, these farmers don't actually, they don't depend on salary. They own their work base, they, they work on that farm as if it's their own farm too. So they have profit sharing rights. Handsomely, they have handsomely uh, 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 paid for their service on that farm. What a good time to become a farmer in Nigeria and Africa as a whole is really, really beautiful. Now you're, you're building a very smart, intelligent product. You're building something that solves problems for a lot of farmers across Africa. And in fact, as an educated person, I'm beginning to think, am I not going to go into this niche already and, you know, start doing you, something? You're invited. <laughs> of course, it's something I should consider. Now, I think the, the, the biggest question for me now is, Building a brand like this, there must be some untold or maybe ugly stories behind it that not every entrepreneur is telling us. So do you mind telling us, or if there is any, what are some untold or ugly stories around building projects like farm chain finance? Well, well it's not easy. Uh, in fact, uh, they say the entrepreneurial journey is not an easy one. I remember when I, when I was going through my course on um, entrepreneur Entrepreneurship in Emerging Markets. Mm -hmm. That was one of the certificates I had from the Harvard Business School yeah. uh, online. Yeah. Um, no business that doesn't come with its challenge. True. Very, very tedious. If entrepreneurs start, um, they say, uh, when they start washing their dirty linens outside, you'll be, you'll be <laughs> so amazed what That's these what entrepreneurs go through. go through. Before you see a project becoming a successful project, there are a lot of challenges behind the scenes. A lot of failures. You know, one of, a lot of failures. I've built products that have failed. 
Farm chain finance is not my first product. True. I've built other products. I built natrium, nitronium and some other products I've built that didn't succeed. Uh, so it's not quite easy. You know, one of the one of the one of the biggest challenge we've been facing that I, I personally have faced, you know, is getting the right team to work with you. Okay. It's a very big challenge. Very big challenge. If any entrepreneur is able to get that very right, I think it's going to go a long way to make that project to be a successful one. Getting the right team to work with you is one. Then another thing is getting the needed resources to be able to pull your project to where you We're want to get to. talking about funds. So funding and all of those stuff. It's not really easy. Product like Farm Chain Finance, it, 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 the resources are so enormous. People wow. might not know. What we've spent in building this product, the truth, I, I have to tell you something. I, you know, we've been building Farm Chain Finance as a bootstrapping project. All on we your own. All raising on funds we've, we've on your not, own. We've not accessed fund from anybody. You know, you make mention of if CBN has been helping us. Yeah, nothing. I remember asking we've that. We've never done do that. Do you have plans to actually do some fundraising? Yeah, actually. But for we, now, we you are still on full, full bootstrap. Yes, for now, we are on full boost, bootstrapping. So we, why we decided to do that, you know, we, we have to... Um, in, in business, you have to think very smartly. You, 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 when you are building a project, you don't just say, ah, you want fund. People, yes, you see people who are really willing to give you fund. But sometimes you might, you might get uh, at a point whereby if you're not careful, you might lose the, the whole idea, the whole concept of, of your business. business. Because some <coughs> of these investors might want to uh, want you to dance to their own tune, follow their own idea. You know, they which your they idea. might not have yeah, the, the clear picture or direction of where you are going that's to. True. That's true. So that's why we decided to push trap on our own, trying to do our business as lean as we can using the lean startup methodology in our, pro in our project. Mm -hmm. That is what we've been doing so far. So uh, by, by the time we'll be getting to the point where we'll be getting funding, we know that we've been able to scale to a particular level yeah, by funding. Uh, people who will be giving us funding might not uh, be, be, be directing us the way yes. they want us to I go. get you. Uh, I get you yeah. now. So you made mention of your professional certificate in entrepreneurship. Yeah. Can we say it has aided the decisions you've made so far to successfully grow from chain finance to this level? Very, very well. In fact, um, it, it has helped me. I, 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 I told you I graduated as an engineer. I'm yeah. a civil engineer by profession. I'm also a chemical engineer. And, um, um, you know, when I graduated, while, while I was in school, I had this entrepreneurship mindset. Mm -hmm. In fact, while I was, when I was graduating, I told, I told my, most of my, my course mates, I said, look, I won't work for anybody. I like being the boss of my own. I like, I like your own time, I your like own space. Building, I like building. I, like, I just love building. So right from when I graduated, even I, I have a construction firm. Oh, okay. Yes, That's I where do. the engineer comes That's, in, yes. the civil engineer. I have a construction in. firm that is in operation okay. even as we speak. Great. Yes, I have an engineering firm. And, um, you know, um, I, I just um, love building. I love anything that has to do with uh, entrepreneurship. So this whole um, um, thing led me to go into um, studying um, entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship in emerging markets. And that course exposed me to a lot of things. That's a great course, entrepreneurship in, in emerging, in emerging market. markets. Yes, it, it, it exposed me to a lot of things about entrepreneurship. In fact, when I had to bring what I learned from that course, even into my construction business, yeah. it has helped me succeed so much in that area. And also bringing it into the blockchain space, it has helped me to, uh, in fact, um, it's not something I have to boast about. But I know the extent I've gone in the blockchain space. Mm -hmm. I know people that we started this blockchain business, blockchain together. space together, and many of them have dropped off on the way. But we are still, we are still struggling and pushing, pushing harder. And um, we we know that um, definitely we're going to scale so massively that many persons might not even. That makes a lot of imagine. sense. Makes a lot of sense, Mr. Stanley. So if you're watching this right now, that's a chemical engineer a civil engineer who's come into agrotech and is also doing blockchain, you are not limited to anything. If you, if you are limited to one or two things, then that is your choice. That is why I would always employ you. No matter the first degree you have, no matter the cert certificate you have by you, learn to get a skill, maybe around something you love to do or something that gives you joy practicing. And one place you can find that is at www.daba.school. Visit the website, click on Get Started to see our courses, pick a course there, and then start doing something around it. These are courses 
that are not taught in the schools you attend right now. So while you have your first degree bagged, you can also get a skill to learn and get practicing already. So we're still together on this, Mr. Stanley Golomo, and I'm really enjoying this conversation. Now, we just talked about you professionally, you know, using your experience as an entrepreneur to pull business and make it really interesting for you. In all this, entrepreneurship and all of them, you have learned your lessons. What is one failure you have come across in your journey so far? One very big failure you have experienced in your journey so far, and what have you learned from it? What has it taught you? Uh, well, two things. Um, in, my, in one of my first startups, I failed woefully. You know, I say it is um, lack of experience. Okay. Let me put it that way. In as much as you have, um, you have um, a desire, you have a zeal to accomplish something, you have a solution that a, pro a problem that you have a solution for. True, yeah. If you don't have the right knowledge, the right exposure, it, it, it definitely is going to be a big challenge for you. True, definitely. That was part of the challenge I faced when I started my journey early, at uh, the earlier stage. Um, lack of experience is one of the one of the things. In as much as I know that, oh, I'm educated, I have some skills and all mm -hmm. of those stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I just rushed in and say, ah, I want to blow this whole business, this whole idea fast. But and you failed. All of a sudden, everything crashed. <laughs> And when it crashed, I had to go back, sit down, and I started looking at what are the cause of this failure? What have I not done right? So I had to sit down and start putting all of these things in place, making sure that I don't repeat those mistakes. In as much as I tried not to repeat those mistakes, I still see, I see made certain mistakes in the process mistakes. again. Uh, especially when I started my digital, digital asset management firm, and that was um, early 2017 that I started my digital asset management firm. There are certain mistakes I made when it comes to digital asset management for people and all of those stuff. Uh, and it's affected me a lot. It affected our business a lot as his digital asset. But um, over time, we learn from those mistakes and we make sure those mistakes never repeat themselves. And today we are standing strong. We are doing very well. Um, our management, our portfolio management is very fantastic. When it, we, with um, my digital asset management firm. Then when we started Farm Chain 2, we also encountered some challenges. Okay. We encountered some challenges. We've been through a um, series of incubation programs as okay. Farm Chain. We, 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 we are in Innovation Hub here in Lagos. Oh, we, Innovation Hub? Yes, Innovation Hub. We went through the incubation program. Okay. Yes, in association with uh, FCMB. Okay. Yes, we went through their project and their process. We also um, participated in the Starfleet Incubation Program. Okay. Uh, that's in 2019, late 2019. We also participated in the Y Combination Startup School. Yeah. 2019 batch too. Um, we, we've gone through this process, but the fact is that all of this incubation program helped build, build us as a startup. Gives it you also helps build me as an entrepreneur. All of this knowledge put together has helped me to see how to manage the whole startup process. Mm. And that is what has kept us. Even when the COVID-19 came, it hit on us badly, heavily. But our farmers could not go to farm anymore. We could not do anything with our farming. It, virtually of, every activity was halted. Most of our farming was halted. It became a very big blow for us. It, many, I know many startups that just went down the drain like that. But here we are. We are still there. Of course. And still pulling through. <laughs> pulling through. So it's because of the, the trainings that we have received so far through these incubation programs and all of those stuff. That is what has brought us this far. So the mistakes have been done in the past, but those mistakes are never to be repeated. Of course. So we can comfortably say you've gained skin in the game based on your experience. So much. And even your failures are what you have leveraged on to create successful businesses. Now, you made mention of having a background in engineering, civil engineering, chemical engineering. Can we say those in any way is responsible for your success in the blockchain and agrotech space? Because I don't see the relationship. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that uh, my certificates are just, I don't know if I can even remember where some of them are. <laughs> 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 that the judge the truth. Uh, you know, uh, yes, going through the, the schooling School system process. is good. The truth, I tell people that there is nothing as powerful as having the right skills because the education system they won't teach you what you encounter out there mm -hmm. as an engineer that i am my my if i tell you my contemporaries 
That is what I mean by contemporaries. My cosmates while we were in school and all of yeah. those stuff. There are things that I do today in my business as an engineer that many of them still come to me. Many of them call me professor. Mm. They see me as their consultant. Even some of my lecturers, if I tell you that two of my lecturers in school work for my business, for, in my construction firm. Wow. As part time. I guess they, the difference is you understand the business side good. of the entire you, process. Now, like I said, the, the bring, bringing in business into bringing in uh, the, the entrepreneurship idea into other aspects of my business has made my business to succeed so well. Wow. Because most of this, uh, most of what they teach you in school, you, they'll teach you the Y, the X, this calculation, <laughs> that one, that one, <laughs> and all of those stuff. But when you come to face the real world, you see that if you don't understand the business aspect of it, you can't succeed. So apparently you had to get a more practical certification mm -hmm. in that entrepreneurial yes. program. I, I had to I had to go um, through the online processes. Mm -hmm. I had to gain some certificates online. Mm -hmm. And the fact, the truth of the matter is that learning from the feet of some top professors, some top global professors, who taught me in the entrepreneurship business. Mm -hmm. In fact, my eyes were open to a lot of things. True. I saw how the likes of um, Bill Gates, how the likes of Mark Zuckerberg, all of these people, how they started, what gave them the, the what, what the helped drive. them to, the to thrive and yeah. succeed in their businesses. And um, I had to learn through that path and see how you can build a big business from scratch and be, make it to become a global business. So right. that is why whatever I'm doing, I don't just look at the local economy. Mm -hmm. I look at how to scale my business to become a global, global business. Global thing. That makes and a lot of sense. And the only way you can do that is making sure your business works through the online processes. Because if you try to build your business through the traditional thinking, you can't go global. True. True. You're very correct. You're very correct. All right. Now, um, you know, we've talked a lot about farm chain, finance, and being attached to the blockchain technology and all that. I don't think we want to complete this conversation without this particular question. Is there a token attached to the farm chain finance? And if yes, how do how 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 is the token run? Who benefits from it and how? Okay, we have a token. Okay. That is attached to farm chain finance. All right. We are building a DeFi protocol and um, this protocol they they need to be um, a token that powers this ecosystem. True. So we have our token, the farm chain finance token, which is called the FIFI token. That's the ticker. Okay. FIFI. Yes, it's basically built on this and uh, the Binance Smart Chain. Okay. Yes, it is launched on the Binance Smart Chain. If you go to the BSC scan, you see our token there. Okay. Yes, it's right there on Binance Smart Chain. But um, we we are planning to go for our uh, um, pre-sale, our public right. pre-sale, towards the first quarter of next year. And um, the the token basically is to power the entire ecosystem. Okay. Where okay. the community which is made up of um, the blockchain enthusiasts, crypto enthusiasts, investors, and all of those stuff. These are made up, these people make up our community. We have our community, we have Telegram community, we have a Twitter community, oh, great. combined community of close to about 50,000 members of this community. So they are the ones who are actually going to play around this uh, token. The token, you could use our token to stake mm -hmm. on our pool, you stake. Then the token is also used to reward um, our NFT holders. You remember I talked about the yes, fractionalized yes, NFT. Yes. So anybody that is going to co-own these soilless farms, they are going to own these unique NFTs. Okay. So they, they, they will have a pool where they can, where so they can yeah, take stake. these NFTs and they will be getting FIFI token in reward as well as earning from these farms. So they're going to be earning sense. double reward from this old, these two process. So well, the I think token I'm is going to be used within that, uh, within that space. I think I like the future, what the, the token is looking like and how it operates. So it's been a great time with you talking farm chain, finance, and a lot of the other features that comes with it and how you've even explained the aspects where the token is coming up and how the token and the community is going to build that. It is a lot. You've got the experience, you've got the knowledge, you've got the, the, the skin in the game and the mistakes you've learned from is enough for somebody to look at um, Golom or Solomon, I want to learn from him. And so that brings me down to this question. What would you tell the younger generation of product builders like yourself to motivate them to do even better? What would you tell them? Yeah, one is uh, making sure to get the right skill. That's great. There are a lot of resources out there online, like the Dabado School. It's a very fine um, uh, um, um, area where any young person can go get some very vital skills Great. that could help them to scale their businesses. It's not just about having the idea, mm -hmm. but having the ability to scale that idea. 
So you, you need to have the right skill. Nice. Um, make sure you have the right team to work with you. Team. To build very your important. project. Key. Very, very important. Your skill, your team is very important. Then also, um, they say follow who no road. Of course. Get a mentor. Get somebody that, that can guide you through certain processes. Don't just jump into a field just because you feel that you have certain, you have these skills. Mm -hmm. Try to know those who are already players in that field and try to have some good rapport with them. Let them guide you through certain processes. It's very, very important. I've been in this space, and uh, while I'm in this space, I had to follow who no road. Of Let course. me use that word. Uh, I, I tried to get close to certain people, and that is what has brought me this far in this space. That makes a lot of sense. So you get the point now. If you, the advice from Mr. Golomo Solomon today is get a skill, get a mentor, keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. And then you get better at the stuff you are doing. Thank you so much for coming on the program. I'm going to use this opportunity to also ask, please, how do we locate farm chain finance? I am an investor. I want to get on board. Or I'm a farmer. I want to get to do business with farm chain finance. How do I get on board? Uh, it's very simple. Now, what we are doing is a decentralized finance protocol. Um, although we are, based in, we are based in Nigeria, in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, um, but you can visit our website to get all the necessary resources you need, um, www.farmchain.finance. That's our website. Um, there you can get access to various informations that you need about what we are building and what we are doing. There you get access to our documentations and all of those informations are there. But we are actually based in Port Harcourt. Uh, for those also who will be interested in, um, in the fractionalized NFT farms, while we are building these farms, we'll be showcasing information about these farms so people can have idea of the locations of these farms. Mm -hmm. uh, so that you know that you're not just you're not just owning an NFT, but this NFT is representing real assets. So we, we're going to be providing all of those information on our platform. Even if you want to go and visit, but of which is not necessary for you to do that. But if for some persons who might be very inquisitive and mm -hmm. want to visit, those information should be located, will be, will be right there on the platform. So you holding that NFT alone too, it gives you access to all the information about that farm. <laughs> you have those information. It's more like you, you yeah. have the farm so in your hand. Yes, it's more like you're having the farm in your hand. So that, 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 that NFT that represents the data of that particular farm contains all the necessary details about that farm. That so farm. you can decide to go and spy it on your own to be sure that you are owning something real. True, true. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. So do not forget www.farmchain.com dot finance and then you get all the details you need to get into partnership do business with farm chain finance um this is a very interesting conversation and we have come to a part in this particular show where i call it the ritual part because we do it's a bonus question <laughs> we ask some very quick five questions and then yeah they can be educative some of them are polar questions you need to say yes or you know you give a quick answer to but before we get fully into that we're going to go in for this short break and remember right back we'll play the games and we see how Mr. Gollum or Solomon reacts to it. Let's take this short break. We'll be right back. Skip this ad just as you skip buying Bitcoin at $4,000 and Ethereum at $100 in 2020. And now Bitcoin and Ethereum have reached a new all-time high in price. Don't you want to learn how to make money by trading and investing in cryptocurrencies in 2021 and beyond? In 2020, during the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, I wrote an article advising people and pushing them to buy Bitcoin, stablecoin, and other cryptocurrency. I'm sure those who took my advice are richer down. 2021 is another year that opens opportunities for you to make money from the crypto market. There are two sets of people watching this video right now. The first one are those who are going to ignore this offer, make mistakes, make excuses and move on. The second one are those who are going to take this offer, join my students who are making millions from the cryptocurrency market. My name is Chris Ani, Africa's number one crypto influencer, teacher and founder Daba.school. Welcome to my online course. In this trade and make money course, you learn how to buy, how to sell, coins to profit from, fundamental analysis, technical analysis, how to spot a coin that will make you money, how to also avoid losses in the cryptocurrency market, and a lot more. 
Not just that, when you get this course, you will also be added to my private premium signal room where you will see the coins to buy and the coins to profit from. So what are you waiting for? Click the link below to get this course or go to www.daba.school and get the trade and make money course. You can also download the Daba app and get the course on your Daba app. What are you waiting for? I'll see you there. Welcome back. I'm still with Mr. Golomot Stanley. Sorry, not Solomon. Golomot Stanley. And we have had a very great, great time. If you're just joining us, this is Daba TV. You're watching the business leader of the week. My name is Emeka Eze, and I have Golomot Solomon with me in the studios today, the CEO and co founder of Farm Chain Finance. I've had a great time talking. You can just take out time to like, subscribe, share this particular video with your friends, and let's get the good word, word out there of what Daba TV is doing for you and yours. Now we are going to that part where we'll do these very quick questions. It's the bonus game on the business leader of the week. Five questions. And um, you may not need to do some deep thinking into this. Just quick responses as they come. So the first mm -hmm. one is, when Stanley is not CEO in Farm Chain Finance, what do you do? Wow. Uh, I spend I, I spend most of my time with my family. Family uh, man. I love I love outing a lot. So I go on outing a lot with my family, go to nice places, sit down, um, share some time with family and friends. And friends. Uh, um, I love um, I love um, swimming. Oh, That's you one swim? of my hobby. Oh, uh, rivers. I states, swim a lot. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm oh. actually from Delta State. Okay. So okay. You're still exposed I, to water anyway. Uh, yes, <laughs> I love swimming a lot. So that, that's um, part of me. I love reading. Um, so I'm an ardent student. So I love reading a lot. All right, that makes a lot of sense. He's one man who likes family and for fun, he reads, he swims. Great. Now, second question. Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos? Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Is yeah. that why? <laughs> why Elon Musk? Uh, I see him as the... As, uh, in fact, I, I correlate with him a lot. In I see him as part love. of the Gen Z, gener the Gen Z, oh, who, I think who, I get that who thinks now. very wide. Uh, so in, in terms of um, building technology and a lot of the stuff, I admire him a lot. So Elon Musk for you over yeah. Jeff Bezos. All right. Number three, if you got a chance to change your career path, what alternative career are you picking? Uh, finance. Yeah, you finance already. Yes. <laughs> and I'll still pick it. you pick it over and over again. pick it over and over again. All right, that makes sense. He sticks to his career path. And he's not even looking to change. Even if you come back again, you're doing finance. Finance. All right, makes sense. Number four, what female in tech or blockchain, in the blockchain space, do you admire and why? Is there uh, a female in the blockchain space you admire? Uh, there's one female I admire so much. Um, her name is um, I.B. McDonald's. Okay. Yes. Um, she's somebody who I see who has actually been, been in the space and she has been doing very well. She has helped a lot of... Um, people come to the blockchain space and then um, in fact she's a very very uh will i how will i i don't know how to describe her but she's someone i admire so much okay I so, admire her so much. what's her name again ib ib mcdonald's ib mcdonald's yes. that's because she has been very helpful or instrumental in getting a lot of persons into yes. the blockchain space and she has empowered she has she has helped a lot of people to be empowered teaching them about blockchain the blockchain technology cryptocurrency and a lot of people that I know that has been empowered through her sure. education. And that trends. makes sense. You know, there's something I realized talking to you. You really are about learning, empowerment, educating, helping people learn. That makes a lot of sense. That places you in the position of a full-blown facilitator. I mm. think I like that. Okay, so this one. What's your favorite number? My favorite number? Yeah. Seven. Seven. So if you tried something new and you fail at it seven times, your favorite number is seven. If you tried something new and you failed at it seven times, would you go again or would you consider it a sign to give up? Uh, I see seven as a perfect number. That adjusts me. Okay. I see seven as a perfect Are number. Are you a Ronaldo fan? No. Are you a football I'm, fan? I'm not a football fan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's but, go. But um, seven, I see seven as a perfect number. Okay. So I, I, I don't think I can fail up to seven times. By the, time I get, by the time I get to the seventh time, 
it must be perfected. It must be perfected. It must be perfected. That's that's an angle. That's an angle. So so I I I, I don't know. Uh, as an added student of the Bible, I see seven as something very unique. Of course, biblically, seven is completion. It it represents completion. It represents perfection. Yeah. So uh, it's my unique number. Uh, and um, in fact, when I got married, um, I, we had no child until the seventh year. My baby, Until the my, perfect my year. first baby came that seventh year. That happens so to be the perfect it's, year. It, to me, it's a perfect year. It's a perfect number. That's it's, that's it's perfect for me. That's very beautiful. That's very beautiful. Have a fun time with you. We've taken five quick bonus questions. And I'm really impressed about how you handled the fifth one, about your favorite number and failing. Mr. Golomo Stanley is so certain that he will never fail at something seven times. Because at the time he hits number seven, it's perfect. Perfect. You're done. Thank you very much for coming on this show today. This Thank is the business leader of the week. I am, I am very pleased to have you. Thank and you. we're glad to host you here at Daba Studios. If you are just joining us, we just rounded up the business leader of the week. But of course, you can catch up with this video by seeing it again. Like, subscribe, follow, share, be a part of our community. And if there is a CEO, a face you want us to bring right here in Daba Studios, we've got you. Put that person's name in the comment section. And I tell you, we're going to have them in the studio when next we're having a show. Thank you very much. I remain Emeka Eze. This is Daba TV. Until we meet next time, bye for now and enjoy yourself.